Hey guys, today I am going to explore the question of how much trouble could Anthony Farrar's team at TPG be in if this confession is true and he did actually lose $2 million in watches and what that fallout would look like for his team. Now, I'm not going to focus on Anthony in this video. I'm going to focus on the team. Who is the team? Uh, initially, Marco. Now, was this part of the original TPG plan to do it with consignment watches? The way that I believe it could have worked was very similar to Bernie Madoff. If you have consignment pieces coming in, you liquidate them relatively cheaply. When the consignee calls you, you can give them the cash. And as long as you have more consignees who are going to give you a watch than the ones that you have to give them cash, you're good to go. So if the new consignees are, are giving you more valuable watch, and maybe it's not even the number of watches, just the value of the watches. If the value of the watches coming in from new consignees is greater than the money going out from old consignees, then you can continue this on forever and live a very lavish lifestyle until somebody, or in this case, a marketplace, like I said, the marketplace is undefeated, uh, figures out, that wait a second, there's something wrong here. I want to take my watch and or money back. And there's a run on the bank or in this case on Anthony and people figure out that wait a second, my consignment piece has been quote, what stolen? Whether or not it was stolen, it could have just been into this system. Now, how difficult is this to prove? Uh, you would need some deposition. I just did a deposition. It was about six hours last week. They can ask you any questions. They ask me, do I drink? Uh, I said no, and they say commendable. I mean, they can ask you any questions you want at the deposition, and they can f ask you questions to throw you out, and both plaint every plaintiff has six hours with you. Recorded. Now, on, in my opinion, there are there is some liability, and there is some blame. A lot of people are cheering Liz and Darby on. They just left. Right, they, according to Liz and Darby, left July 9th before this message. Luis left, I believe, during the message, right? Or on the same day the message was revealed on Reddit. So, I mean, how much did they know? We don't know. And until you go to deposition and you start grilling them, you ask them for texts and emails or whatnot chats or whatever they're doing, right? Uh, what app chats, what app, not whatnot thinking about the sports card videos right now, uh, who knows? Like, who really knows what is going on here? And to be quite frank with you, I don't know. You don't know. That's why we have discovery. That's why we have deposition. That's why we have all these things to figure out what exactly happened. Now, is there liability? I fully believe that there is liability here, and liability can be passed around. Uh, how many people knew, who knew when, when were people suspicious, right? It seemed like the rest of the crew, especially, let me point out Liz and Darby, they hung around until the money ran out. Well, we're, if, if this is a scandal, right, uh, like many people on Reddit are suggesting, then, then did they know, because uh, they clearly benefited from the scandal. So it's the Bernie Madoff scenario, which I'll explain again. Bernie Madoff's wife said that she had no knowledge. She lived with Bernie Madoff for the whole time and for decades he's been doing a Ponzi scheme. The wife said they didn't know. The two sons say they didn't know. One of these sons committed blank, right? And the other son just disappeared. I think he died of cancer and probably the stress got to him. Rest in peace. You, know, you don't want to see that happen to anyone. But the idea was the wife didn't know and the two sons didn't know and only Bernie knew. That seems very unlikely, in my opinion, that Bernie didn't let slip out in conversation and he was so close and the two sons worked for Bernie uh, that no one in the company realized such an obvious Ponzi scam because they were all benefiting from the Ponzi scam. Same with the FTX. Either you, these influencers are very, very stupid and can't figure out basic things or they were in on it and they got paid and they just are they were, maybe not in on it. Maybe they just didn't care. As we see from these things, there are people who benefit from these scandals and the scams and the FTXs and the burning. 
you can't say that Bernie's wife did not benefit from Bernie Madoff's celebrity at the time and also fame and also donations. The wife was at the galas, she was worshipped, she got treated very well. You cannot say these sons did not benefit, right? From their father being this wealthy billionaire on, you know, individual. So the people who benefited the most will often say, I don't know. But I feel like more digging and more depositions should go. The two individuals that benefited the most from Anthony's ventures is Liz and Darby. So they have to be investigated. They have to be looked into, in my personal opinion, because we have to find out. It could be that they didn't know anything, what wrong was going on. It could be that. But until they are depot, until their depositions are taken, evidence is found, we go through their text messages and email, we won't know. Uh, same with Luis, the same with uh, Trevor, the same with uh, Jimmy. Jimmy, for instance, he left at a very opine moment, right? I mean, it was a very opportune moment that he left. And I would guess that maybe he thought something was wrong, right? But did he benefit from the free watch that he was given? You know, so it's kind of like Bernie Sanders. He donated a lot of money to charity because he was, again, very wealthy. And that money was bad money. Now, the question is, do you, do the charities have to give the money back? Do they get to give, keep a little bit of it, which they already spent? If they are, and if they're two different charities, maybe one had the money and they didn't spend it for whatever reason, they can easily give it back. And maybe one charity has already done charitable activities with the money and no longer has the money. So how do you get money from that person or that charity back? There's a lot of interesting moving pieces here that... I don't think we will know the real truth of for some time. I think it will take a lot of investigation, a lot of intrigue, right? Uh, also, I mean, you could even go down to Marco. Then Marco was this part of the original TPG strategy, right? It's interesting, right? Because you have a situation where he's misplaced $2 million in inventory. Why is he bringing $2 million of inventory with him? and acting careless and uh, the drinking in a bar, uh, especially with his partner being robbed. Uh, I mean, there, there's got to be some speculation out there that maybe he wasn't robbed, and this is just a way to excuse his behavior, right, to justify why he cannot pay you. And then, and then at the end of the day, this is justification as to why um, you can't get paid, why he's not going to be able to pay even though you can sign a watch with him, and it's been some time. Never a dull moment with Anthony. Uh, definitely a um, an interesting thing. I mean, very interesting character. Again, you probably will never see a character like this ever again in your life. And someone who continues to fascinate me beyond what I... You know, every time I don't think he can do something more crazy and, and it proves me wrong... If this is real, this is astounding, right? This is really crazy to admit all this stuff because what it actually looks like, you know, um, it looks like something else, right? It, it looks like something else. And the reality of it is he's not going to get the benefit of the doubt. That was a long time ago. The TPG crew, they're not, they should not be given the benefit of the doubt. Just because he said that this $2 million was lost and it's his fault, I would look into it. I would seriously look into how the $2 million was lost. Was any of it recoverable? It's a large enough of money that it's, I, yeah, for some individuals who have consignment, it's, it's life-changing money for them. And they trusted him. And that's the saddest part about this, regardless of if they're stolen or if it was part of a scheme. The watches are no longer around and the people cannot get paid. The people who mo get understand this. Let me, if you guys are at the, this part of the video, let me know because this is my wisdom. The people who trust in him most got screwed over the hardest. That's a terrible human being, regardless of what it is. If the watches are lost, if the watches were ponzied, whatever it is. The people who trusted him most, who trusted him enough to give him a consignment, 
they're the ones who got F the hardest, right? And and we can complain about this, but I personally was not affected. You personally were probably not affected. But there were people who trusted him and consigned watches with him who are now out large sums of money and with very little, very little repercussion at this moment in time. Um, there's no magical formula that they can get their money for their watch back or even return their watch back. It sucks, man. And you got to feel for those people because they are victims. Don't get, get, get it twisted. Victims are victims. You don't want to victim blame. And in this case, they trusted the wrong person. Bye, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below.